Casey Smith here with Kitech USA. We'll talk a little bit today about all the different types of Kitech swim baits and when I throw each one. Um, there's a whole bunch of different sizes, shapes, and colors available. I'm going to help you narrow down which ones you want to throw when uh, and, and know a little bit more about each individual bait. Um, the ones we're going to talk about are the Fat Swing Impact, which is probably the most popular one. Pretty much everybody at least has a few packs of these, uh, at least seen them, aware of them. Uh, gets a ton of media, media attention. Uh, next one is the regular swing impact, which is pretty similar. It just has a skinny body. They're both paddle tail baits with a solid body, ribbed body on both the fat swing impact and the regular swing impact. And then on a little bit different style is the easy shiner. Uh, not a ribbed body on this one, but same thing, solid body, uh, same shad profile to it as the other ones. The fat swing impact, um, like I said, for me, is, is it's most popular among everybody and probably my favorite one too. I have this one tied on. I live up in the Northeast and I got this one tied on really from the day the ice goes out until you can't stand a fish in the fall anymore when it gets too cold. Um, has really good action. It's a good blend in between something that's subtle and something with a lot of action. Um, and the reason that is, is because of the, the way the body is shaped and formed. Um, it's got kind of the fatter upper end to it and it thins way down, gets really thin in front of the tail and that uh, gives the back half of this bait uh, the majority of the action. Uh, what that does is allow us to really, really, really uh, slow retrieve to, to still have the tail kick. Uh, and the other benefit of it is the faster you reel this bait um, or as fast really as you can stand to reel this bait or would want to reel this bait, it's never going to roll over and it's never going to to get out of action. Um, a lot of the hollow body swim baits and other swim baits that are a little bit harder, don't have quite as thin a tail in the back or area in front of the tail. Um, the issue with those is when you reel them really slow, say you're creeping it along the bottom in the early season or late in the fall, um, the tail doesn't kick. Uh, this bait, when you throw it out, even on the sink, if it, you have an eighth ounce head or quarter ounce head on the sink, this tail is going to kick. You're going to get a lot of bites um, on the fall because of that. And also, like I said, as you're creeping it along the bottom, just about as slow as you can stand to reel it is going to give it any action. It's going to give it action. Um, and, and same thing, when you reel it really fast, it's not going to roll over. What a lot of those baits will do with a hollow body or that are, are, are harder bodied will roll and come back to you sideways. It's going to give goofy action. Uh, colors of your bait are going to be out of skew. It's, it's not what you want. Um, this just has a really, really good uh, moderate action, slow speed, good tail kick, nice soft tail kick, um, really good all year round. Like I said, in the spring it's not too subtle or it's not too much uh, when you slow it down to get that nice subtle kick. Um, rigging this on, generally for me I'm rigging it on just a ball head, jig head, and like I said I'm throwing the smaller sizes generally here in the northeast, a 3.8 to a 4.8. Uh, do spend quite a bit of time throwing a 2.8 and a 3.3 as well. Um, this is kind of my standard setup though. It's a, this one has a quarter ounce jig head on it. Like I said, all ball head jig heads. Four-aught hook in those sizes is plenty big for me. I use something a little bit beefier in those sizes. Um, pour these myself. There's a bunch of different ones on the market. Kitech uh, Super Roundhead Jig Head is also a good option. Um, that's generally how I'm, I'm rigging those smaller sizes. Uh, throw those from really an eighth ounce up to a three eighths or even a quarter ounce uh, or excuse me a half ounce um, as I'm fishing a little bit deeper. Uh, anything bigger or heavier than that I'm generally using a bigger bait anyways um, and, and when I'm using the bigger baits that's when I go to a bigger hook overall, a bigger jig head uh, and like I said the heavier weight. So anything really a, a half ounce or heavier um, I'll go to this bigger jig head with a bigger, beefier hook. It's usually a 6 aught and up hook. Uh, like I said, 5.8 and up sizes are the ones I'm talking about. Um, and I'll go anywhere up to an ounce, ounce and a quarter I've thrown it. Um, lakes down south with big gizzard shad in them where the fish set up deep like Douglas Lake or Kentucky Lake, uh, Tennessee River Lakes. Um, that's a really good option. Anything with big gizzard shad in it. Um, these big baits really shine with big large mouth uh, and that's that's the setup I use when I'm in those scenarios. Uh, another way that I'm rigging it, and a lot of guys are rigging it, 
Uh, this is how I started out rigging it, was just on a regular screw lock, um, belly weight hook. Um, this is actually the same setup pretty much that I used in the Costa when I won on the Potomac in 2016. Uh, I was fishing it through grass, letting it get down in the grass, reeling just above the tips of the grass and popping it out with my reel or with my rod tip. A lot of guys around me were throwing a chatter bait and a swim jig and louder, uh, you know, more aggressive baits. Uh, the fat swing impact had a really, really good tail kick that the fish in the post bond wanted. It was a little more subtle, almost a, more of a power finesse presentation. The fish really ate it, uh, as you can testify by the results. Uh, I had a couple really big bags in that tournament, uh, and pretty much everything came on a swim bait. Um, the other option for a belly weighted swim bait hook is the one with the underspin. This is kind of a newer deal. I'm just kind of getting into this. Been playing with it a little bit more and more, but. Uh, Really like it. it, has good action, good flash, uh, doesn't affect the action of your swim bait at all. Uh, fish seem to act, react to it a little bit better if the water gets a little bit muddy, which um, a lot of guys get scared of that with a little bit cloudy or dingy muddy with a swim bait. You don't have to be scared of that. They'll find it, they'll eat it. Uh, maybe adjust your colors a little bit, but uh, keep, it on your, keep it on your front deck, it's a good option. Uh, another option on a way of throwing them is on kind of these wobble uh, jig heads. Or also a bear chatterbait. I've seen a lot of guys throwing it. Uh, throwing it. I don't do that a whole lot. Um, this is a good option, guys. Fishing ledges. I'm seeing them do this. Uh, starting to see it creep up here in the north a little bit more around smallmouth with a little bit lighter weight and a little bit smaller bait. Um, another really good option. Again, kind of need a little bit heavier weight to keep the bait down with this type of head. A three eighths or a half or so is usually a, uh, what I see guys throwing. Um, next bait is the fat swing impact okay and the major difference between this bait and the other one is obviously this one has a skinny body and the other one has a fat body so what is that body doing to the bait is the real question and um, my opinion is it's giving it a lot more action with the skinny body okay with this big body you can see as it gets fatter up towards the front of the body the action kind of dies down uh, you can see right in the area about where the hook would come out the midpoint of the body is where, you, where your kick stops. And with the swing impact, you can get that kick all the way up through the body of this bait, okay? And keep that in mind for the time of year that you're throwing it. For me, this is a warmer water bait, at least from the spawn or the pre, late pre-spawn on is where you want this bait tied on because of that aggressive tail, tail kick. Earlier in the fall, it's good too. Um, for me, uh, I'm using this generally as a trailer on a chatterbait or a swim jig. A lot of guys are throwing it on a regular jig head, and that works really good too, especially around smallmouth. Um, for me, I stick to the fat swing impact uh, just because I like that tail kick a little bit better, but a lot of guys really like the extra tail kick on a swing impact. Um, the reason I like it on a chatterbait is because it is such an aggressive action, and the chatterbait is a really aggressive um, action in itself. Uh, the, the regular swing impact, in my opinion, won't cause the bait to lose any of its natural action through the blade. Uh, bulkier baits, heavier baits on a chatterbait will kind of dull the action of that bait down a little bit. The, the action of the chatterbait itself on a regular swing impact is going to translate through this skinny bait and kick out through the tail. It's really going to keep a lot of good action on it. Also use this exact same setup on the Potomac in 2016. Caught a really big fish in the last day that was key on that bait. Um, the other instance where I'll use a regular swing impact is on a umbrella rig. And the reason I do that is because it has the extra tail kick. I'll use it on the outside baits or uh, any, any dummy baits, anything like that. And then I'll put a fat swing impact on the inside, something that's a little bit bulkier and beefier and sticks out the back a little more for the fish to hone in on is where I'll put the fat swing impact, but I'll use these regular swing impacts on the outside. The other benefit to that is the regular swing impacts are a little bit cheaper when you're throwing four of them versus four or five fat swing impacts. You get a fish that tears your whole rig up. You're not going to burn through a bunch of money. Uh, swing impact for me in that application. Last bait is the um, Easy Shiner. And for me, I, I use this one a lot in a three inch and four inch model, okay? Um, there's the difference in the two. And the main difference in this bait, and you can see it in the three inch one really well, in the four inch here too, is where the tail kick is. Uh, the tail kick is really in the back quarter or back third of this bait. 
and the body stays a little bit more still. That's key because to me, this is a better or the best out of all of them, extremely cold water bait where you want a really, really subtle action. Uh, the three inch is especially that way, um, has a little bit harder body and still has that really thin section in front of the tail to allow the tail to kick at a really, really, really slow speed. Like I said before, this bait can sink and with you not doing anything to it, the tail is still gonna kick. As soon as you start to creep it along the bottom, the tail is gonna kick up uh, and give that nice subtle tail kick. Um, so for me, I'm using this bait, especially the three inch one, as soon as the ice goes out, uh, when the water is in that mid to upper 30s is when this one comes out, uh, or the four inch one. The four inch one I usually put on once the water warms up just a little bit more and gets into the upper 30s, low 40s, because it does have just a little bit more action on it than the three inch. Um, three inch, depending on the depth, um, you know, same ball head, jig head, um, usually like you start with a 3 16 for the lightest one just because it's a light bait as it is so you need a little bit of weight on there just to cast it. Um, Super round head jig head by Kytec is what I use on this one because it does have just a little bit finer hook uh, for subtle bites when the water is really cool. Uh, two or a three out hook on the small three inch one. Um, four inch one basically the same setup as I use on the fat swing impact that I talked about earlier. So uh, keep this little bait in mind it's really good. Um, like I said, the four inch one, same thing, really good cold water bait, has a little bit more subtle action and the body is what dictates the action on all of these baits. Um, the other instance where I'll use the, the regular Easy Shiner is the four inch Easy Shiner is on a chatter bait or a swim jig trailer. Uh, and same theory really as the uh, swing impact, has a little bit thinner body so it's not going to disrupt the natural action of that chatter bait. Um, the action of the bait, the chatter bait is going to translate through the body of the bait and the tail keeps a little bit more of a subtle kick, a narrower kick on the easy shiner than it does on the swing impact. And that's important if you get a couple days into an event or uh, really bad weather one day in an event, uh, fish aren't reacting good or maybe swatting your bait, you can put the easy shiner on there instead of the regular swing impact, dull the action down a little bit of the tail kick and maybe pick up a few bites that you wouldn't got otherwise. So. I hope all this helps. I hope it helps narrow down what baits you want to throw when, the difference between those baits, and why the differences are in those baits because it's important to know what causes them to do each act, each different action. So uh, please check them out, www.kitechusa. I uh, hope this helps. Hope you catch a few more fish.